Okay, by now the candidate should be practically an expert in the absorption costing and marginal costing um, methods. Uh, the purpose today is to uh, just review the principal distinctions between uh, the two methods. Um, if one goes back over the work that we did in the discussion concerning the profit and loss uh, formats between the two, one can see that the absorption costing is focusing on grouping the both the variable and fixed production costs. Remember the fixed overhead costs of production uh, in, in combining all of those on a per unit basis to derive a gross profit figure and to look at the variable, the, the non-production costs, both variable and fixed, as a separate item below the gross profit line in order to reach a net profit. The marginal costing has a different way of grouping the costs. What it's doing is it's extracting all the variable costs, whether production or non-production, in order to derive a contribution result and to put downstairs all the fixed costs, whether they're production or non-production in nature. So we can just see what we're doing here is we're, we're carving up the cake in uh, different ways. But there's more to the story here in terms of reconciling, reconciling the two methods. Um, one will notice that the profits uh, figures that were calculated under the absorption costing, the marginal costing, um, differed one from the other in the previous scenario that was covered. Now let's just go back over the scenario that was uh, covered last time and make a comparison of the results. We said that under the profit and loss for year one, marginal costing method, we had a profit result of $20,200. And for the year one, when we did the same thing, profit and loss for the absorption costing, profit came out higher, $20,950. let us just make a note of that here. So the marginal costing result was $20,200 and the absorption costing was Twenty thousand nine hundred and fifty for year two. The results were for marginal costing twenty nine thousand four hundred dollars, and for uh, absorption costing method twenty eight thousand six hundred and fifty. Now, I'm not so much interested in the evolution or the change in marginal costing uh, profit levels from year one to year two. What is interesting is actually the comparison is for a given year, why do the marginal costing and absorption costing results differ from each other? After all, we're talking about the same company with the same underlying story, uh, which involved the production of 1,000, let's put that here, the production of 1,000 units and the sale of 950 units. And therein lies the answer that explains the difference between these two methods. What happens, and you probably will have uh, been reminded of this in uh, from, from the previous paper and going over your notes, sales were less than production. We produced more than we sold and therefore we created at the end of year one um, an inventory increase of 50 units. Now, that 50 unit increase in the inventory, that inventory valuation, uh, did not include fixed overhead costs, production costs, under the marginal costing system, but it did, the inventory of 50 units did carry with it some of the fixed overhead costs when we use the absorption costing system. In other words, those 50 units, because they were also absorbing $15 of fixed overhead costs, meant that the difference, quantifying the difference between the marginal costing and the absorption costing system, 
would be the product of these two numbers. 50 times 15 is 750, which precisely corresponds to the difference in the profit between the two methods. So what we can say is that if the inventory increases in a given period as it did in year one, then the absorption, the profit under the absorption costing system will be greater than under the marginal costing system. And that's due to the fact that a portion of the fixed overheads of those $16,500 of fixed overheads incurred in year one, they were fully recognized under the marginal costing system, but they were not fully reflected under the absorption costing system. The absorption costing uh, absorbed um, in, the, in the profit and loss only the amount that was sold and what went into inventory contained 50 units times $15 worth of fixed overheads. In year two, you will recall, we reduced the inventory back down to zero. In other words, the inventory went down by 50 units again. We're going to have the same effect. 50 times 15 gives us 750. And that's going to explain the difference between the marginal and absorption costing results. One can verify that fact here. Only in this case, the absorption costing result profit will be less than the corresponding marginal costing. So if the inventory level decreases, the profits under absorption costing system will be smaller than under marginal costing. So now we have effectively accounted for uh, the difference between the two methods. Of course, the special case of inventory level does not change, then the profit calculation for both methods will be equal to each other. And one can go through um, numerical examples and work out the profit and loss statement under both the marginal and the absorption costing systems to uh, confirm this. Okay, now we want to uh, move on to some other um, costing techniques. Uh, job costing and batch costing has been encountered in the uh, previous paper MA1 for uh, management information and uh, is just requires some review by the candidate. Process costing is uh, a bit of a tricky area, a trickier area, let's say, um, a little bit more involved and therefore I want to spend a little bit of time just to um, review our understanding of process costing as a technique applying to the mass production of standardized identical products that are moving through a series of processing stages. And uh, in order to capture this, the uh, T accounts are perhaps the best way. One can see here on the left side of the T account would be the um, units that are input into a given process, in this case process B. And we move through process B and the right side of the T account will be the output from process P B. In, in other words, the items which will be moving on to process C. So let's just look at this uh, example because we need some numbers as a basis for our uh, discussion. Um, the T account here is very straightforward. So from process A, we're bringing, we're introducing into process B 1,000 units. They've already um, accumulated production costs of $20,000. And now as their journey proceeds through process B, they will be adding additional costs in the form of materials, labor, and overheads, adding up to $10,000, so that at the end of process B, these 1,000 units will move on to process C, having accumulated now a new total of $30,000. And one can see here that the T account is set up in such a way as to balance the number of units and to balance the dollar cost figures as one can see here with the footings, everything seems to be in order. And in fact, we can say that the, the end of process B, the average cost, production cost per unit of uh, these um, products is $30 per unit.